This week's show brought to you by... Chenault and Hogue for all your insurance needs. Moses Incorporated, complete outdoor power equipment solutions. Welcome everybody to the Scott County Cardinals News Graphic Boys Basketball Coaches Show. It's the final show of the regular season. Can't believe we've reached this point and uh, we've reached this point with the Cardinals playing about as well as I've seen them play in, in my time watching this program. That's saying something because they have uh, they basically run the table in Kentucky during that time. Uh, things are really clicking right now. The team 28-1 and one going into its final game of the regular season on Friday night where they will travel to Paul Lawrence Dunbar in Lexington to take on the Bulldogs. That game not expected to be overly challenging, but you never know. It's a Lexington team that's on the road. I've got to pay attention to that one. But lately, the past three weeks, it's just been one blowout after another. And against some fairly decent opponents, uh, they, they lit up Clay County, did, did Scott County last week, and uh, put up 106 points, and we thought that was big against a team of that caliber. They came out and did it again, matched that total with a 106-55 to victory over Holy Cross Covington uh, just this past Wednesday night this week to, to, to go to 28-1. Big things happening right now. The Cards rank number nine in the Max Preps national poll, so top ten nationally. They're also top 25 USA Today. They're ranked number four by USA Today in the Midwest. And, of course, uh, a near unanimous number one in the state. There's some guy out there still voting for John Harden, number one. We'll just let that speak for itself. Uh, they are undefeated, so, so props to John Harden. But uh, I think on paper, if you look at the schedule, all things being equal, it is hard to dispute the fact that SC is a number one team in Kentucky. But uh, we'll let that speak for itself again. A lot of balance on this team and a lot of people stepping up lately that uh, you've probably not seen step up the way they have. Cam Fluker, 29 points, a career high last week in a game where he hit eight threes. And then this past Wednesday night, Kobe Harris came out with, on fire with uh, seven points in the first quarter, closed the door with 10 in the fourth and finished with 19, one of the best nights of his career. And uh, five players in double figures led by Diablo Stewart with 23, Glenn Covington had 19 big nights from Bryce Long and Taron Hamilton as well. And Fluker off the bench with nine. They almost had six guys with, with 10 or more. So uh, the cards are getting in from all sources. And of course, with Michael Marino, his impending return, he, he returned to practice on a limited basis this week. Coach Hicks is kind of thinking uh, he'd like to get him in there soon to get his get his wind and get his uh, get him in a rhythm a little bit. But... Uh, a lot, is, a lot is on the, the player right now to decide when he's ready, and uh, he's still still getting ready, hopefully, for that stretch drive, so we're all rooting for Michael there. What's ahead? We mentioned the Dunbar game. Then comes the 42nd District playoffs, and it starts on Wednesday night. The, the entire tournament will be at Henry Clay High School in Lexington. Scott County, the number one seat, will take on the winner of the 4-5 game, which I believe is Sayre versus Frederick Douglass. Uh, they've obviously handled both those teams during the season uh, combined three times. So that game would punch the ticket to the region tournament if they win that. Then Scott County would probably have to play Henry Clay on its home floor next Friday. That won't be easy. They've done that once this year, and it was a tough one. Had to rally to win that one. From there, it's on the 11th region tournament. The district champions will host quarterfinal games this year because of a scheduling conflict at EKU. So... Hopefully, Scott County gets one more home game. We had senior night, and we had kind of the secondary senior night against Holy Cross where uh, SC was kind of standing alone and doing its own thing without the, it wasn't a girls-boys doubleheader. They really took the opportunity to showcase themselves that night. So uh, maybe, maybe, maybe one more chance to see them at home. The crowd's been really great lately. The student sections, we got to give a call out, a uh, shout out to the uh, B team, really showing out here these last three or four games, and it's made a huge difference in, in the atmosphere in the house and, and uh getting the players fired up as well. So please continue that road or home or neutral court during the postseason. Uh, we'll talk about the region tournament and the district tournament a little more next week. But uh, in the meantime, we've got Coach Hicks. Uh, it's been a couple weeks since we've talked to him, but he, he, gets, uh, he gets down to business talking about how the team has performed lately uh, in terms of finding, uh, finding that chemistry as a group without Michael and what might happen when they can blend him back in and talking about some of those career uh, career nights that we've seen from the likes of Cam and Kobe, let's see what Coach Hicks had to say. Scott County enjoyed a revenge game of sorts against Woodford County. I had a, a week to prepare, and and, uh, and they really they really played, gave us a, quite a scare, and uh, 
in the Tour de Classic. Actually, the crime we had that last shot, they beat us. And, and so our, our guys had a little something to prove and to themselves, to themselves. And, and I, I think to our fans who uh, not used to us having close games like that, but it was, uh, I think we came out a little more determined to play defense than play as a team. Coach Hicks loves to play games that remind him of his mountain roots. You know, it's, it's always special. I saw a lot of old friends I hadn't seen in a long time, and so much of my history <laughs> came through Clay County, competing with them and battling them, and Bobby Keith, the great coach from Clay County, and uh, they, the coach they got, Glenn Gray, and all the guys were great players over there, and the people, and uh, the radio announcer and I, we got talking and talking, and finally I said, we got to get off the court, we got to sing tonight. <laughs> but I just enjoy those, those. Those are really good people, and there's a lot of people in Clay County that every time in my life that I've done something memorable, they, they've sent me cards and letters. And, uh, they, they, so to, to play them, and now, we, you know, I, they're down a little bit right now what they were, but, you know, it looks like they got some really good young kids and coming back. And it was really special to coach against Richie Farmer and, and Russ Farmer's. Boy, and, and the Robinson kid, his dad, I remember his dad played over there at Clay County, and, and uh, it was a special night, and glad to win, win the game. This year's senior group stands out in Coach Hicks' storied career. Yeah, that, I can't remember, I, can't, I don't know how we can imagine coaching without these guys. We've been through them four years, you're right, and, and it's amazing, Cal, what they've done in four years. It really is amazing. Uh, we've had some good groups come through here, some great groups come through here, and they rank right up there with the best of them. Michael Marino's return to the Cards lineup is day to day. It's just, it's just I think with Michael and, and talking to Dan, Dan, we've got a great trainer. Dan Volpe is not a good one. Dan's a great one, and Dan is is bringing Michael along. And as with any injury, a lot of times it, it becomes a mental thing. You know, uh, I think that the, he's passed a lot of the injury part, but I think now he's just a little scared about jumping and scared about doing anything. So that's the big obstacle he's got to get through now. The regular season finale at Paul Lawrence Dunbar won't be a pushover. I tell you, Dunbar, I saw them watch them play last week. Very, very athletic team. They got a couple of six eights, and I got a six seven. They've got, man, they're big. Then they don't have veteran guards. They got a really good guard. He was, I, he didn't play last week, Gad. That he really makes them better when he's in the, when he's in the lineup. They're as good as anybody in the region, probably. Without in the lineup, they they go back to a freshman guard and some younger two freshmen start. And they have the two kids that transferred in from Africa that just that moved in moved into the neighborhood there this year. And boy, they're athletic. They're athletic. They're tough. Our guys have been really faking around the basket because they're really good shot blockers. All right, that was Coach Hicks. Hey, we want to thank all of you who came out to support the Leader of the Pack documentary premiere on Wednesday night. Great crowd at Susan Moore Auditorium. Great to see a lot of uh, familiar faces there and, and some not familiar faces, some people who've been part of Billy Hicks' life and career and, and have watched him throughout this 25-year cycle at Scott County. That's really what the documentary focused on, and it was exciting to hear the reactions. And, uh, and hopefully you all tell your friends, and uh, the, 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 the DVD is on sale, and we are looking forward to that. Uh, looking forward to getting as many uh, eyes, in front of as many eyes as possible. And a portion of the proceeds will go to the Tyler Hicks Memorial Scholarship, so great cause as well. Players, we mentioned Cam Fluker, 29 points, career high. We mentioned Kobe Harris, 19 points, career high. Without further ado, let's see what they had to say about the, the recent tear they've been on. Fluker's 29-point performance against Woodford County was unprecedented. I've had many times where I've dreamed about doing something like this, and I actually did it, and I just couldn't stop cheesing. <laughs> Glenn Covington has inspired Fluker with many similar performances this year. I, I asked Glenn after the game, and I was like, is that what it feels like to shoot into a basket that big? And he was like, it's every night. I said, okay, I'm, I'm right behind you then. Kobe Harris said the cards were ready for revenge against the Yellow Jackets. Uh, well, playing them last year with Cooper Robb, beating them by four points at their house, and then letting them talk all that talk at the uh, Toyota Classic and barely beating them by two, that's enough fuel in the tank to get anybody going, really. Senior night had an emotional start and a big finish. We had a little emotional thing in the locker room, and it brought everybody together, and we felt like we need to take care of business as seniors one last time. So we went out there to take care of business. I mean, just playing together all these years coming up, you know, we had a little soft moment in the locker room right before we came out, and I guess it just touched everybody to, you know, go out there and get the mission done. 
Scott County has hit its stride heading into the playoffs. We're going to focus on what we usually do, play hard on offense, rebound, defense. Just keep the same thing we've been doing, just take it to another level. Uh, just really executing on offense, getting better, play by play, and uh, every play getting better on defense as well.